Hello everybody and welcome back to the Triple Jump podcast. It's a video game podcast. My name is Ben. My name is Peter. And my name is Ashton. Happy birthday to, to Tiny you. Peter. Happy, Happy birthday to Tiny Peter. Peter. Happy birthday to Tiny Peter. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to, to Tiny Peter. Peter. Hooray! He's 67 years old yeah. today. Yeah. Only two more. And, and then, then it's the good dead. number. Then I'm dead. <laughs> then <it's> the, <laughs> yeah. How how was it? How it was birthday? great. I, oh, despite being sixty seven years old, mm. had the birthday of a seven year old <laughs> cool. by going to the zoo. Did you have some squash? Uh, at home, I had some squash sandwiches sure. with the crust cut off. Yeah, uh, great. Part, party rings. You had a hot dog. Yeah, yeah. At the zoo. At the zoo. Yeah, a zoo hot dog. Wow. You had to, oh, sorry, knows what animal Brass it was made of. Did, sorry, yeah. did you say that you went to the zoo, or did I just did I just oh, reveal that? I don't know, but I did go to the zoo. He went to the zoo. Yeah. That was his six year old birthday. Got up and had had naughty breakfast. Had a bacon sandwich. Bloody hell. Home grilled. <laughs> went you to the zoo. You haven't got many of those left. No. Went to the zoo. <laughs> uh, had a hot dog. Mm -hmm. um, came home. Had pizza. <sighs> And afterward, what and uh, and birthday cake, hell oh, yeah! And cool. I, by the end of the day, I felt so unhealthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you were allowed to because it's your birthday. Yeah, yeah. was it That's a good zoo? Point. Yeah, it was actually. Not, you know not how a, some zoos was are it an like. Zoo. Zoo. Oh, uh, oh, uh, like that, a dog. The dog. Yeah. <laughs> Don't um, know if that's okay. It's not. It's not big. Uh, it's only. It's a small-ish zoo. It's Northumberland Zoo, um, which. Mm. No one will have heard of because it's a small zoo. Right. Yeah. But it's good enough that they have two snow leopards. Whoa. Um, yeah, but do they seem happy? Yeah, they did actually seem happy. We were we thought the exhibits were really nice. Okay, cool. For zoos. I went to a zoo in Leicester mm. and we walked around and I was like, I'm a bit sad. Yeah. Like it was fine, mm. but I was like, oh, they don't look happy. <laughs> like We did specifically say at one point like, oh, wow, this like. I could live in there. I wow. quite enjoy it. Looks quite fun. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so wow. there was there was a lot of space mm -hmm. and a lot of you know foliage enrichment, yeah. which is how it's pronounced. Enrichment. Yeah. yeah. You could see that they had like you know they put like hide stuff in balls and things like mm -hmm. that, and barrels, and they had things to play with. There was in the snow leopard place. There was <laughs> it was kind of gory. There was a rope hanging down from the ceiling mm -hmm. that just had like blood on it. Cool. Um, nice. Which I think at one point Used had a have an big piece of it. meat on it. Cool. And that. it was like, it was about 15 so they make the feet hot dogs off the squash. ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about 15 feet off the ground. So I think they must have to like leap up and grab it. So mm. there's stuff for them to do, I think. So Great. That's seemed good. The blood rope. Yeah. Have you been to the really sad aquarium in Tynemouth? No, but I've I discovered that yesterday. It. It's, I was I was wondering because uh, there were no penguins at um, the, oh, right. the zoo. Penguin and penguin, <laughs> and uh, we're having a, a young person to come and stay with us, Amy mm. and I, in a, a, a few months' time, and he really likes penguins. Right, and I was like, oh, where can I find penguins? So I was doing some googling, discovered that there is an aquarium. Is there yes. penguins? In they don't have penguins. There are oh. no penguins, um, no. but. I'd never heard of that aquarium until mm. now, or I'd forgotten about it. Is it not good? Well, I've been a couple of times. It's it's an aquarium, and it's mm. it's cool. And there's a bit at the back that have seals like yeah, swimming around, seals, and they've yeah. got a little seal hospital there as well. Oh. So when the seals are rescued locally, they mm. come there to recuperate, and then they get released again. So that's nice. The first time I went, they had otters, and that entire yeah. room stank. I love right. otters. And they had I, them at the zoo as well. Did they? Mm. Mm. I love otters. Did they have a blood rope as well? Or? <laughs> uh, I think maybe they'd, they'd taken it underwater and drowned. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Killed it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the otters weren't there last time I went. However, the thing that really throws me every time I go, and it is quite sad because most of the aquarium is underground. Yeah. They have a monkey exhibit. <gasps> oh, yeah. I saw them on the website yesterday. Yeah. What, under yeah. the ground? It's just dark. They're just it. There's like artificial lighting. And these may be, the, now, these may be special monkeys that love the dark. Water monkeys. Aww. I don't. Otters. Oh yeah, those are otters. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I don't know if these monkeys are like they like natural light is bad for. Them. I'm trying to make excuses. Yeah. Here. Basically, you go around and go, why is there a little monkey bit, and why a are they dungeon. why are they hidden <laughs> underground, <laughs> away oh, no. from the sunlight? Oh no, not a monkey. So dungeon. I'm not saying that if you go to the aquarium, you support monkey dungeons, oh, but no. there is a monkey dungeon. So just be oh, aware. I was going to go to the. The aquarium. Now I don't it's know a great I aquarium. Sad monkey just don't dungeon. go to the monkey dungeon bit. <laughs> just go straight past and look at the seals who are oh, recuperating. Okay. Uh, yeah, 
anyway. We have something for you, Peter. We do. A little Aww. birthday prezi. As is tradition, you have a podcast present yeah. that Ashton and I picked out. There was it's... a little bit of snaffling uh, mm. a few yeah, weeks ago yeah. where something was handed to Ben and he, he opened it under his desk. Yeah. And I thought, can't I let him see. I think I know what that might the be. A present for me. Mm. It is wrapped beautifully. Yes, yeah, really so if, lovely. If you'd like to close your eyes and hold out your hand, <laughs> we'll pass it along. <laughs> beautifully wrapped. There like, we are. You can open oh. your eyes. Is it a fish supper? <laughs> it is, <laughs> yeah. yes. My grandma, when she wraps stuff, sometimes will give you a gift bag and just a piece of wrapping paper that she's put on top oh, in the bag. Sufficient. I've experienced yeah. that before. Yeah. Oh, what could it be? What could it be? What do you think it is? It's a lot of paper. So much paper. <laughs> it's a lot of paper. It's hard-ish. Mm. Well, I should hope so. <laughs> Be worried if it wasn't. Kind yeah. of kind of cylindrical. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's like ASMR right now. A spiro now. piggy bank or something. Oh, that close. would be cool, but that's not it's it. Good idea for How next year. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. Yeah. That's bombad, in fact. Yeah. It's a jar 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 glass. Yes. It's a yeah. drinking glass. There he is. And there he is. That but, is a a collector's item. Uh, it, a it is. Star Wars Episode One Jar Jar Binks glass. Yeah. Only slightly sort of fogged up. Only a little bit yeah. tired. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, it says something on the bottom. Down Pace Limited, made in Indonesia. Oh, wow. and suitable for dishwashers and microwaves. Oh, nice. there you go. You, you can warm up your cider. You can do whatever you want. Your milk. Oh, it feels a bit <laughs> weird. Does it? Well, it's I've just not... you can feel the transfer. Oh, yeah. What are those frog people? I'm not I don't, sure. I don't recognize those. <laughs> so who are they? The fish. I don't know who the fish are. They they look like they look like memes. They look like flip <laughs> posts. What are That's what are great. those? Who are those uh, guys? Just some guys. What's his name? What I does he do? One of them is the one that he eats off the market stall. Oh right. And it gets oh, caught in his mouth. Snacks. That's kind of grim, just immortalized <laughs> on yeah, the glass. Yeah, but it's alive. It's before, yeah, it, before gets it gets eaten. Caught oh, and eaten. Man. The other one I don't know. But uh, wow. wow, thank you. That's lovely. You're That's welcome. Okay. I'm going to keep that on my desk and it's going to be my office drinking glass. Oh, Fantastic. Well, lovely. happy birthday to you. Or maybe I'm going to take it home and enjoy it in the privacy of my own home. <laughs> well, then you can return it. So yeah. that would, would be a safer bet. Yeah. A happy birthday, Peter. Happy thank birthday, you very Peter much. Austin. That's lovely. Very thoughtful. It's now time to crack on with the rest of the podcast. Uh -huh. Ashton Matthews, I believe you have... Why are you smiling? <laughs> Excited. Okay, um, I believe you. You're never this you excited about work. I don't it looked like the face of someone who had forgotten to get an official ad read. <laughs> I was it. having to quickly remember it because my oh, these yeah. are not my notes. No, um, uh, my notes. We haven't got our printer's not working. No. So someone, so Andrew printed off my notes, but these aren't mine. So I was having to quickly like really what struggle to remember what I had what I had been sent Ashton's got my um, notes yeah I have the sponsor in, okay. it's in my head um, so you guys there was a trailer that came out this week for an upcoming um, game mm. Uh, Star Wars Outlaws, just in case you didn't know. Um, but there's there's actually something that's coming out like same day and also released a trailer on the same day. But really? it's it's a TV show. Okay. Um, but they wanted to, because there was all this talk about Star Wars, they wanted to make sure that their thing was uh, talked about as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know how like when you're a kid and you go around someone else's house and they make like a spaghetti bolognese and you eat it and you think, my my mum's is that. It's, not, it's okay. not the way Mama makes it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but they're kind of doing it in like episodes of a mum making a different meal every week. Right. Um. So it's uh coming August twentieth, the first episode of Mama Wars, coleslaw is the first one. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first one. And uh, they're doing then they'll do like uh yeah. but they do coleslaw salad. singular or coleslaws. Coleslaw. Singular. Okay. okay, right. They're all making it. Well, I guess there is technically coleslaws because they'll all make Can them. Can I interest you in one coleslaw? Just yeah. one, just one bit, for me, thanks. Yeah. Single shred of uh, cabbage. Yeah. Wow. It's judged by Jamie Oliver. Uh, Jamie Oliver's oh, involved? Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's judging the mamas. And he did <laughs> just because he wants to. Yeah. Okay. And some kids. The kids all judge as well. Are you involved? Judge it as well? No, oh. I'm not on mama. No, but you, you, I have one, you like to judge Mama. I do like as to judge Mama. How mm. flippable. Yeah, are, yeah, but true. I can't, I wouldn't be able to focus on their food, That's true. you know, so I, yeah. I wasn't asked to judge. Um, like, it's not real either. Oh, Would man. you believe? Oh. Mama Wars Coleslaw. I thought that that <laughs> name was so good that I thought there's no there's no way that can't be fake. Can't Mama. be real. Can't what? be fake. Can be, that's got to be true. It's got to be correct. It's not, though. It's not, though. 
that's really sad. Yeah. So no, but maybe that could be a good TV show. That Specifically, someone should, you just Cole's law. N- not no, every week is a different thing. Like right. Bake Off, they do a different thing every okay. week. Right. Well, and Mama is each episode Wars. called something different. Like, Stop saying it. <laughs> episode two is called Mama Wars Potato Spaghetti. Potato salad. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Mama Wars Chili mm. Con Carne. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Rogue Bun. Yeah. Very good. The Phantom Lettuce. Yeah. We, any <laughs> the more? The salad episode. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the other ones are called. The Clone Slaw. I, that's Cold Slaw. Yeah. Fries yeah. of Skywalker. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, uh, the Jello. Je- yeah, I was, I was about to say the last je- <laughs> the last jelly. <laughs> I was thinking solo. Jello oh, okay. was what I was thinking. Mm. Okay. Anyway. I've got nothing, I've got nothing else to, to put in that. Uh <laughs> thank you to our actual sponsors, our wonderful patrons over at patreon.com forward slash team triple jump. If you go and support us there, you get access to all sorts of rewards, including asking questions on this podcast, early access to weirdest mm. and worst games ever, exclusive access to episodes of Rules Boss and Main Menu, and much more. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much to everyone who supported us over there. Uh, a few things before we get started today. Triple Jump. Up is our website. That's where you can find links to our YouTube, our Twitch, our Discord, our Cameo, triplejumpshop.com. I'm wearing new merch today. I've done it. I'm wearing old merch. Dead Island oh, 2, right. the spider. I keep forgetting to take my t-shirts home. They're Milk. on my desk. Yeah, me too. Heart and shirt. It's fantastic. And you should get one. And one day we will find it. Is he here? Yeah. Oh my God, there was a big spooky spider in my house yesterday. Was that it was him? It was brown and like, like not hairy brown though. Like it was disgusting. Oh. We found out it was like a wood, a wood louse eating spider. Oh, but okay. So a friend. My boyfriend saw it and he was like, what is that? <laughs> 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 Take a picture of Why it. would God do that? Yeah. Why would God do that? It was that? horrible. Triplejumpshop.com. Go get yourself some amazing merchandise. Mm-hmm. And patreon.com forward slash team triple jump once again. Uh, if you'd like to support us there. A few things out this week slash few things coming up, guys. Yes. On the 25th of April, we are doing 7 a 7 d- p.m. 7 p.m. We are doing a D&D. We are doing our first ever foray into not like I mean on content we've we played it before just yeah. as a practice but uh, our first ever on content foray into the tabletop role playing game genre uh, it's being game mastered dungeon mastered by our wonderful writer Kat and it's going to be great a seasoned GM yes, yes. exactly DM. DM we've um we've all got our character classes picked out and it's going to be great so come along to watch that it'll be in the normal sleepover slot um, on YouTube, on YouTube, and it's going to be fab. Yeah. So this is to celebrate. Check it 300, out. Three hundred thousand subscribers, mm-hmm. and the entire thing is set within a fictional triple jump universe. So yeah. lots of yeah. characters and town names. I think a lot of them based on the amazing map we got from Dead Eye Minis a yeah. couple of tat appeals ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so like Jenkinshire and Ashtown yeah. and Tiny Peaks and yeah. uh, f- Forts. Sports time, I think, is a place yeah. as well mm. on the map. So mm. there's all sorts of silly stuff going on, and we can't wait to. Experience and it. in our experience, cat. I, I mean, no pressure. No, I'm not. Don't. I'm not setting any expectations here. But when we've played off content with cat before, mm-hmm. she's done all sorts of crafty props and things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's brought scrolls and we had like to solve a puzzle the last time. Tomes yeah. and uh, we went to a casino once, and she'd brought like a little roulette, roulette wheel and yeah. yeah, all kinds of practical effects. So. Now, whether or not. We, as the people who make content for a living, are able to do her vision justice by setting up the cameras correctly. Yeah. Remains to be seen because we've never That's shot this any, afternoon's project. We've never shot anything like this before. So hopefully when you see it, it's gonna it will do Kat's wonderful story justice. But yeah. yes, 25th of April, 7 mm-hmm. p.m. on YouTube. Set a reminder, you can go to youtube.com forward slash team triple jump forward slash live, and it's already there, so you can remind yourself. Also, there's a Worst Games Ever coming up. Mm-hmm. It's uh, Beast Wars. Mama Wars. Mama Wars. <laughs> the Force of Bacon. Um, <laughs> been waiting to say Did that you have one that one and you were like, I'll go find some of them. It just, just been too much time for me to say it when I thought of it. I was like, <laughs> then oh. Scone Wars as well. That's another one. Scone, scone Wars. Wars. The Scone Wars. Scone oh, Wars. Yeah. Scott, sorry, the, the Scone Wars. Wars. Sorry, that doesn't yeah. work, does it? Uh, Beast Wars Transformers. We did a... Uh, uh, gate or not a playthrough that implies the whole thing we we played a bit of that on worst games ever mm-hmm. so um check that out it was mm-hmm. available a couple of days early for patrons and yeah. everyone else on sunday mm-hmm. additionally we did a sponsored stream this week of turbo kid which is a metroid sort of retro style metroidvania 
uh, with a BMX, and it's actually really fun, really good. Uh, James, oh, I was not good at it. James Jenkins, Ashton and I played it uh, earlier this week. You can watch the VOD now, and if you could do us a favor, we'd really appreciate it if you could click through the link that's in the description and the pinned comment. Not only does that help us out, but it really helps them out as well. They're an indie developer, and they've made what I think is a pretty cool game. Yeah. So you can go check that out now. Did you say it was an After Dark as well? That was something, wasn't it? Yep, it was also After Dark. On Monday. Um, coming up uh, this week, early this week. Not earlier than normal, <laughs> just saying. It's coming up soon. Yeah. Um. So on Monday, uh, if you are watching at time of release, it's a couple of days away. If you're watching a little bit later, it might be out already. Oh. But that's for patrons only. So head to patreon.com forward slash team triple jump and you can t listen to us talk about Non gamey things. Yes. What did we do? We talked a lot about garlic bread, didn't we? There actually? was a lot of discussion about garlic, garlic bread. bread. Yeah, it's actually it's already been recorded and I wasn't there. No. no you were having your, holi your holiday birthday, birthday yeah. holiday. Yeah. Uh, shall we get into question one? Yes, let's. Yeah. It's from Chris McVeigh who says Hi, BAP. Xbox have created a new team focusing on game preservation and continuing access to backwards compatibility into the future, according to messages from the president, Sarah Bond. Bond, Sarah Bond. How important do you think this compatibility aspect will be for the next generation and beyond? I.e., if the PS6 were to end compatibility with PS4 games, do you think that would be enough to end Sony's run of success? Or could this just be setting up for Xbox users' digital games to follow them to whatever platform comes in the post-console world? Emphasis on digital, but I accept I'm the weird one for still buying physical series X games. Ooh, Chris, uh, ooh. Ooh. I still buy physical games. It's okay. Not on Xbox, though. No, that's true. <laughs> um, so I've got a, uh, a little quote here from an article from windowscentral.com. It was an exclusive for them, apparently. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, but it's basically just repeating what was in the question. I didn't like the way they hyphenated offline in every instance in that article. Oh, I didn't notice that. It's really... Well, off hyphen line. Yeah. Ugh. And then they said that they they, <laughs> they have a habit of offlining games, but it was off hyphen lining games. And I was like, this, I don't know. Off lining It's got to be a better way to to write that. Oh. Well, they said, as part of the emails to her team, so some emails have, I think they were essentially leaked, but Microsoft have now just confirmed that they are genuine. Mm -hmm. uh, Sarah Bond revealed that Microsoft has now set up a dedicated team to ensure the future proofing of the current Xbox game library against future hardware paradigm shifts, ensuring that our games remain accessible long into the future. Quote, we have formed a new team dedicated to game preservation, important to all of us at Xbox and the industry itself. We are building on our strong history of delivering backwards compatibility to our players, and we remain committed to bringing forward the amazing library of games for future generations of players to enjoy. End quote. Sources tell us that Microsoft may have more to share publicly in this area around the annual Xbox showcase, which is expected to take place on the 9th of January. June. June. <laughs> It's already been and gone. No, 2025, we've got to wait. Yeah. January, mm. June. I wish that um, there was some like more juicy emails leaked. Yeah, I don't want this corporate. This feels I'd like, like an almost I'd like the email one, being like, it's so God, Nigel from Accounts is doing my <laughs> head in. I just would like that more. You know? Nigel. Anyway. Mm, yeah. Uh, well, I to answer Chris's, Chris's question specifically, <laughs> I don't think that uh, this will necessarily in itself kind of spell the end for PlayStation's ongoing success. Um, I think it's a great thing what Xbox are doing. I think that Sony should be doing it. Nintendo should be doing it. Um, but I don't think it's the be all and end all. Um, and uh, so although it's a great example to be setting to Sony and I, I almost wish it would have a slight negative effect on Sony because then it might encourage them to actually think, oh, this is, this is like people are really paying money for this. They really want it. Um, I, I think that part of um, Xbox's more recent success and I think, you know, ongoing success into the future, I suspect, is Game Pass in general, which although it is very much bolstered by having all this backwards compatibility and a huge library stretching into the history of, of Xbox as a concept, I think also Game Pass is just great for being something that you can uh through which you can get access to games on day one without having to actually buy them each and every time mm -hmm. so yeah the backwards compatibility is going to help uh to you know keep the value of that sky high because you just have hundreds of games to play um but uh even without this i think xbox is still going to do well off game pass with just 
new stuff coming out all the time and being available from day one. Um, and uh, yeah, it's 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 merely an example I would like to see followed, but I don't think it's necessarily going to harm PlayStation. I think that between the two, between the three like major companies right now, Xbox and PlayStation are already doing more than Nintendo is, in my opinion. Um, I think that, yeah, that this is great and there's absolutely nothing wrong with the fact that they are doing a preservation like team and I think it's great and I think it makes so much sense. We've talked a lot about video game preservation and how it's already going to be difficult with the way that games work now anyway, but the fact that they are putting a team together, a crack team of experts mm. um, to to make something that would hopefully work to play old games is brilliant. Like Peter says, I don't think it's going to necessarily make Xbox come out on top for the next generation. I think that's all down to what they do next with their technology and how they embrace kind of the future of the console generation more so than I think that like the actual games that are available. Um, uh, but I do think, like Peter says, that it would be great for PlayStation and Nintendo to see what Xbox are doing. And I think if anything, it needs more of a... A, hoo a hoo ha from us and the gaming public as a whole to be made to like get them to be like oh maybe if we did this then people would like us too hoo ha uh, yes yeah. I, is hoo ha correct I don't know what I'm trying to say. you know what I mean though like if people make a bigger deal a song and yeah. dance yeah and more of a song and dance about it then maybe they'll be like oh well they're getting good press let's get us some good press by working on this um, I think that PlayStation are not as bad as maybe they are made out to be. I think they, you know, they don't really care that much about PlayStation Three games potentially. But there is a lot of games that are PlayStation One, Two, and PSP games on the back catalog on PlayStation Plus. Admittedly, they charge you more to play them. Mm -hmm. But if you're someone who wants to play them, I guess it's easy to have them all in one place rather than I guess Xbox is just like a free for all of hundreds and hundreds of games. Um, but yeah, it's a good thing, and I'm hopeful that maybe some someone will tell Sony about this, and they'll decide to do this too. That would be nice, I think. But yeah, no chance in hell. Sony are never going to do it because they're Sony, mm -hmm. and why would they? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, as as the clear, definitive market leader, they don't have to, which sucks mm. because it, they should. And there's a lot of stuff stranded on PlayStation 3 that should be available but isn't. And I don't think that they say, as as Chris says, come the PS6 that they will abandon like playing PS4 games, for example. Because I yeah. think it's it's pretty obvious that PS4 is the definitive start of backwards compatibility as mm -hmm. far as PlayStation is aware. I would be very surprised if future systems don't have the architecture to play at least PS4 games, you mm -hmm. know, going back. PS3 is a completely different situation because it was like a horrible Frankenstein's monster machine and no one <laughs> actually yeah. could make games for it that, that made any flipping sense and porting things to and from it was a nightmare as well. So there's a reason why that hasn't happened so far. I would love to see that resolved, but I, I genuinely don't think they will because there are some stuff, there, there is some stuff, sorry, being kept alive, as you said, through like PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium, but you have to pay for it. And it's not really backwards compatibility because, you know, you don't, you can't put your disc into the system, yeah. for example. And also, this did actually happen once, I think. I owned the... PlayStation 1 classic version of uh, Toy Story 2. Mm -hmm. And when that went up on the PlayStation Classics catalog or whatever, I was actually able to download that, which is the first time I've ever oh, seen right. anything like that before. But that's a very isolated instance. I think Xbox just does it way better. Mm -hmm. You can put your, you know, a disc from pretty much any system into your Xbox and, and still be able to play it. Not all of them, but quite a lot of them. Yeah. And if you own these games digitally, they're still available. The, you know, a huge number of the Xbox 360 games, for example, that are available digitally on on the on the Xbox Store currently, are part of Game Pass anyway. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get them. So technically, is that backwards compatibility? You are still paying for them much the same as on PlayStation Plus, but I just think it's they're worlds apart in terms of their offerings. And but this doesn't say that like 
that they're focusing on being able to put your games into your console. No, 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 not at all. This yeah, is not just at all. Game I'm just comparing the, the point yeah. I'm making about yeah. PlayStation. Like, I'm criticizing PlayStation for for doing the same thing, basically. Right. Uh, but I think that this is obviously a fantastic move and really good. But I sincerely do not believe that PlayStation will ever make similar moves because mm. a they don't need to because they're they're already winning, and b if you if you really wanted to, oh, I've looked completely, my, my mind's gone blank. I've forgotten my point, whatever B was going to be. <laughs> uh, the point I'm trying to make, I suppose, generally, is that Xbox are killing this and PlayStation is. It just doesn't give a flying flip uh, yeah. because they because they don't need to. Mm. Uh, I remember my point now. They are already making money from people who are paying through PlayStation Plus. Yeah. Yeah. And... That's a kind of crappy way to do backwards compatibility if indeed that is backwards compatibility, if that's the only way you're going to do it. But people are seemingly okay with it, at least. Mm. There isn't enough of a hoo-ha, as you said, being kicked off about it. If they can just sit there and make money from like a half-assed attempt at backwards compatibility, then why on earth would they change anything? Yeah, and I think there are there are fewer and fewer people, sorry, less and less yes. people out there now who uh, still own... Uh, a physical collection of, say, PS1 and PS2 games. They're, of course, they're still out there, but uh, not compared to maybe 10, 15 years ago. Who don't uh, also own a PlayStation 2. Yeah, exactly mm. right. But um, so if you are thinking that the PS6 generation, all right, might not be completely digital, it may still have a disc tray, but we're certainly moving in that direction where one day we're going to have consoles that do not have a disc tray, then all those people who own physically copies of stuff from their ps1 and ps2 there'll be nothing to put the disc into anyway mm -hmm. so why it's it's a completely irrelevant point as to whether you're going to create a console that can play physically backwards compatibility play old stuff um well this is what i this is what i mean what i'm saying like they're saying backwards compatibility but i think it's going to end up being exactly the same as what playstation are doing in that it's a digital version that yeah. you can download or stream from the Xbox library and play it. And I do feel like, you know, it's still, realistically, it's still behind a paywall. It's still going to be seven ninety nine a month, if not more, depending on how things get a more expensive as time goes on. Um, but yeah, I think that, I think that the next generation, I don't think we're going to get disc drives. I think, I think it's going to be very rare that we're going to be able to get games that are discs going mm. forward, yeah. and especially in the next generation. So I think even with backwards compatibility, it's still going to be, this game will run on a piece of software that we have developed that will make a Xbox, like original game run on your current Xbox, but it's not technically being played on the Xbox. Well, yeah, that I think that's going to be the... The thing that was going to be part of my point in that like uh if we even just for argument's sake if we say oh maybe sony would would want to do something like this some kind of preservation effort from like older generations if we find ourselves in a position where we are dealing with all digital hardware then the only way that they can go forward in terms of preservation is you know not making it so that you can put your disc in and play it a ps1 disc they would have to create a digital version of said game mm -hmm. and uh there, we we already know that there are some really complicated licensing issues with some mm -hmm. of these some of the biggest games of the of those consoles. Um, with Xbox, I think largely some of the uh, the best games on early X, early Xbox consoles were stuff that was published by Microsoft themselves. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they probably it's probably easier for them to create a library of like all their big hitters, classics, the best games you played on your original Xbox uh, than it would be for Sony, again, in a world where they actually care about this, uh, to create a library of pl true PlayStation classics. I know yeah. they think they've done that or they've told us they've done that. No, you haven't. Not even close. No. Um, this so, could be uh, huge, though. Like f further down the line, this could be a huge selling point for Xbox. Yeah. If, they yeah. stay, if they stay the path, the further away we get... Well, I mean, as long as the Xbox brand or any of these brands last, I suppose. But the further away we get from the original Xbox, and in particular the Xbox 360, and the bigger this library becomes, and they say, hey, Game Pass, you remember all those games you used to love? You can play them now. And yeah. Sony's like, what's a PlayStation 3? Mm -hmm. I don't even know. You want to mm -hmm. stream Resistance 2? Yeah. Not one, two? Yeah. What are you doing? Then that's only going to work in their favor. But 
I, I, I don't know if it's going to turn the, the tide, mm. as it were. I remember, actually, there was a lot of conversation back when Sony announced the, the PSP Go, which was their digital version of the PSP, about how people would be able to, you know, they have physical UMD discs mm -hmm. for the PSP. How can I play my games on, on, on the digital version? Like, what's the point? And they actively said, we are looking into a solution for this, mm -hmm. like some sort of method. And everyone speculated wildly, like some sort of cassette deck that you like clipped onto the back or some sort of thing where you put it in, I don't know, a, a physical PSP and it said, okay, you clearly own this. Here's a digital version for library, free. Yeah. Um, they never did it because it's too hard. Mm -hmm. It's way too complicated. So I don't know what the solution looks like, but it's probably something more in line with, as you said, Ashton, what they're already doing, but better. Yeah. Uh, I hope they do. I genuinely hope they do something. But I am really heartened to to see that this is one of um, Bond, Sarah Bond's first major rulings is we need a team mm. that's dedicated to this. Yeah, stuff. Mm -hmm. that's good. good it's important, really important. Well, now, um, in honor of Peter's birthday, I thought we could try a new segment. Oh, um, wow. And I think we should call it What We Play In. Right. It's what we play in time. Time to talk about the games that we've been playing. Yeah. Uh, Peter, did you did you take like a Game Boy to the zoo? Yeah. Really regress yourself yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sadly, I no longer own a Game Boy that I could take to the zoo. You can borrow one if you'd like. Yeah, yeah. you've got many oh, to Ben's choose from. Ben's got one or two, yeah. Um, but if I had one, I would have done. I'd have sat there playing Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. So please don't talk to me, wife. I'm playing Tony Hawk's Pro yeah. Skater <laughs> I need to go into the the bat house where it's dark so I can see the monkey dungeon better yeah, the <laughs> monkey dungeon. Um no, I didn't take anything with me, but I have played this week a little bit more of it's the same again for me, a bit of Dragon's Dogma and a bit of Tomb Raider 2, which nice. flipped me. I'm <laughs> like I'm enjoying it, but I just feel like this is going to go on forever. Mm -hmm. Uh you know, it can be sl quite slow going because you're physically working out a 3D puzzle um, and some of them are, you know, sprawling levels where you press a button and you don't even necessarily know what you've opened up or where does this key go? And you're just sort of wandering around. I'm listening to a podcast at the same time because, you know, there's, there's not a lot going on. All of that is not to say I'm not enjoying myself, but it is just a marathon. Mm -hmm. um, right. And uh, so it's nice, but the number of times I've thought... I might just stop and start playing Tomb Raider 3 because that is one that... I did own Tomb Raider 2 back in the day, but I owned Tomb Raider 3 as well. And I, um, I played that a lot more and I know, I know it better. And, you know, I'm kind of looking forward to that nostalgia hit of playing that one. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm really trying to just carry on because I'm like, I've put all this... It's a sunk cost fallacy, in mm -hmm. fact, is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. We'll see whether I finish that one. But I am looking forward to Tomb Raider 3. Dragon's Dogma, I've been having a bit of a, a better time with Did it. Did you restart actually. it in the I've end? I've not restarted it. I don't know if... Um, I noticed actually last night that it updated. And I don't know if that was the update where they've allowed... They, they've added the option to restart. Because they said they were going to. Um, but I've not just I've not noticed if it's been added yet. Um, either yesterday or earlier. Um, but no, I because you're able to retool your uh, your class and um although i kind of feel like oh well i've kind of invested in this other one now the game is kind of designed where they almost encourage you to sort of try different things over time so uh i've i've done some some shooting with bows and arrows and i found that a bit better actually because i just i was although i did have a couple of ranged attacks as a whatever it was a thief or yeah a thief it was called um i was just kind of struggling if I, if I encountered like a flock of harpies and they were all just flying around in the sky, I've got this like one ability where I can throw a rope, which doesn't always hit. And that was it. And I was like, oh, it's kind of annoying just waiting for my friends to knock them down for me. But, mm. you know, as soon as I've got a bow and arrow in my hand, I'm like, OK, now I can at least attack everything, which, mm -hmm. you know, uh, again, like they're. I think part of the thing is that they're, they're trying to encourage you to if you are not an archer, to have a squad that is capable of, you know, you've got as as a group, you're a jack of all trades and you can deal with, you know, you've got range attacks and close up attacks, you've got a tank, you've got a healer and whatever. So they're all they're trying to encourage the right things. I still kind of feel like the game sort of punishes you intentionally, and you know, they're kind of like saying, do this, and if you don't do it this way, you're wrong and bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um 
but I am I am enjoying it. So yeah, that, I'm just cracking on with that for the most part now. I've played some Hotel Renovator. Ooh. I finished the story in that, got five stars oh, on my well hotel. Um, that game's janky as, and <laughs> like the fact that it's a definitive edition and still so janky is very funny to me. Um, but I played that because me and my boyfriend are kind of doing this current like relay race trying to finish Final Fantasy VII mm -hmm. in that we both are at very similar points in the game where neither one of us wants to be in the room when the other person's playing through the game. Um, so we're kind of like tagging in and out. Like he plays a bit, the next day I play up to that point and then he plays a bit and I play up to that You're point. You're never going to finish this game. <laughs> I'm so close. I'm on chapter 14 now, which is the last chapter. And I think I've got a few hours left. Every time like, my boyfriend's downstairs for a few hours and I think today he's going to come upstairs and he's going to tell me he's finished it. Mm -hmm. And every day he's like, still not done. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. Um, but I probably would have finished it if I hadn't decided to go day drinking on Saturday. Um, but I'm like really, really close now to the end. I got all the proto relics, like all of the side guff. Mm -hmm. um, everything is done apart from like one of the side missions where they wanted me to get really high marks in all of the games at the gold saucer <sighs> and that was a fat no from me couldn't even get like a high score on the easy mode how am i going to get it on the hard mode um How's but yeah ben on on those games he did he do it for he you he didn't no he no. didn't he didn't do it either okay. he gave up he didn't even do all the proto relics which i was very surprised oh. about um but yeah i've i've been enjoying it and um the story is i feel like i'm finally getting somewhere with the story however still totally baffled about what's going on and uh i just i think i'm not as in like engaged with it as i was the first one because i think i am just a bit confused and like there's things happening where i'm just sat there and i'm like what's happening and then he's played it so he's explaining he's what he thinks and i'm like oh okay uh what just wait until you finish the game yeah um, but I am enjoying it and I think it's it's a very pretty game and I really liked kind of some of the mechanics of chapter 13 uh, where you kind of get split up into two groups. That was quite fun. Mm -hmm. uh, though it did keep making me laugh that it kept telling me, kept doing this weird clock <laughs> animation <laughs> where I'd be like several hours earlier and it would cut to the other team. And I was like, what is this weird clock that it keeps like putting on my screen and it's like several hours earlier for like it's been like 15 minutes like what are you talking about hours, hours earlier hours but, um yeah i'm enjoying it and i'm i'm going to finish it this weekend it is my goal to finish okay. it i'm busy on saturday sunday is just finished final fantasy, final fantasy day. day and i'm hoping that by that point if i make myself busy enough on saturday that ben will have finished it so we can sit in the same mm. room and mm. i can be like so what's going on so what's happening now was this in the original game? Which is basically what I've done for the entire <laughs> game. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping I'll finish it this week. Nice. I said that last week, but this week I am This week is the week. It's going to yeah. be different this it week. It is. It's going to be different this time. And then what am I going to do with myself? Don't I know. literally have no idea what I'm going to play Start next. Start a whole new adventure. Yeah. Oh, gosh. What have you played this week? I played a few things because it was WrestleMania weekend. Oh, and yeah. that involved a lot of staying up. So I was just sitting there. Did you stay up in the end? Because you were going I, to watch it the next I day. I tried. Right. The first night, I really tried and then thought, this sucks. I want to go to bed. I'll mm -hmm. watch it tomorrow, which is what I ended up doing. But it was still a lot of sitting around and waiting yeah. for things to start. So I had a lot of time. Like the entire weekend was just was blocked out for watch wrestling. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. three days of wrestling. Watch it all. So I was at home anyway. So I just played loads of stuff. I finished off Persona 4 Golden. Cool. I got up to the point where Rebirth ends in the original Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. So I've done that now. Final, the original Final Fantasy VII is so good. I love it. And I wanted to keep playing. And I did notice a couple of things as I played through. Uh, things that they've either completely skipped over or reshuffled or presumably will show up in the third part in a different mm -hmm. way. Um, yeah, just... just it, There were... Because I noticed when I played through the original again after playing through Remake, because Johnny was a fairly... It was, it was a recurring character in Remake. And I did not... I, th I just assumed he was a brand new character, but Johnny is a character in the original game, but he's just not part of any of the story. <laughs> you just see him from time to time, like if you just off the beaten track or if you talk to NPCs, like you can find his parents and this, mm. they're called Johnny's parents. And he is, he is around and he has a visual... Um, 
similarity as well with the spiky red hair and stuff. And mm. uh, so there were a couple of other things like that that I noticed when I played through. I won't say what though. And, uh, you know, the various bits that were obviously massively not stretched out, but expanded upon. Yeah, I saw a thing the other day. I, I didn't remember the names or anything, so there's no dangerous spoilers. And, and I didn't understand the context at the time, but it, mm. it was basically just saying, oh yeah, this was a character who I think you encounter like maybe a couple of times in the original game. And now he's like, I think he's in charge of a mini game, a whole like set of mini games now or something. Mm. That might be wrong, but it was that kind of thing where it's yeah. like, here's this one guy. He was in the game, but he's just, just this guy. And now they've like taken him and like, now he's this guy and does all of this stuff. And yeah. I thought, man, more games should do that when they do remakes. Like take just tiny little details and say, remember that? Here's like a whole bunch of content attached hey, to that person. Hey, you don't need to tell Final Fantasy yeah, VII that. I know. For the next one. Maybe not one. Final Fantasy VII. Like, they might be like, oh, content. you like that, did you? I know there's, yeah. <laughs> to I was saying, Tony, I was like, who, Cloud. This sounds like what Ashton's been beginning. talking about, yeah. that there's a lot to do. Yeah. But It'll be like, yeah. in, in whatever, Reunion, is that the third one that they're doing? Uh, it'll be like, oh, this is this is Gary. He he's a shopkeeper who you met one time in the original mm. game, and now yeah. now you can do like a thousand jobs for him. You can yeah. explore his tragic backstory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Oh, Gary, God no, damn it, Gary. yeah, maybe not three games worth, but uh, if someone's doing a, a one-to-one uh, remake of you know one game into one game, then mm. you know you could pad it out a little bit with some interesting stuff. Yeah, here's yeah. that extra character from yeah. the original. Here's Gary. Mm-hmm. There were definitely bits, just even replaying them in the original, that I feel like were were done a lot better there, even in their minimalist state. The way that they've been adapted, I feel like, and I'm not the only person who's felt this way about certain points in in uh, in Rebirth, that a lot of the original sort of intention and tone and uh, the hard hittingness was kind of lost because right. it was adapted in a way and expanded upon in a way that kind of stripped it of some of its meaning. Um, and I'll tell, I'll talk to you about that in a bit when we're not recording, because that's technically a spoiler. Mm. But um, certainly it was a pleasure to, to replay the original one. Not completely, but I've made some tactical saves so that I can return to it in 12 years time when the <laughs> next one is out. I finished the, two, the, the campaigns in Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collector's Collection. Just ends, doesn't it? Yeah. It does just end, yeah. Uh, Battlefront 2 is so much better than Battlefront 1. And one of the battles, um, I can't remember which campaign I was playing through. It might have been for Battlefront 2, actually. I had to replay the same battle three times because it crashed over and over again, which was really annoying. um, And I lost a lot of time and patience to it. But it was good. And I feel like now I've sort of got my money's worth out of those games considering I was intending to play them online and can't because they're crap. Rubbish. I've still not played the first, actually. It's, not, since, not since back in the day. Anyway. It's hard to go from Battlefront 2 to Battlefront 1. I, I can 1. imagine, yes. Yeah. It's, it's, t- it's a tough sell. Uh, I've played Vember as well. Oh, yeah. Which I bought a while ago and finally got round to playing, which did it win a BAFTA recently? Yes, it did. I think it did for in- cultural influence or something like that. Mm. It's really good. Yeah. It's a lovely little story. It's about an hour and a half long. Um, about is it sort of South South Asian, yeah, uh, South Indian cuisine and about sort of an immigrant family to who have emigrated to Canada, Canada and about how food connects them to their culture mm-hmm. and you know, the various members of the family. Really, really good. I, I was a bit lost to begin with because I was still learning the rules of how it expects you to sort of work out how to yeah. cook things. And I was like so I'm selecting this and trying to use it with this, but you're saying that's no good because it bounces off it. And then I do this and it says, no, 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 that didn't work. We need to do, we need to try a different approach. I'm like, I literally cannot see any other approach than this. Fortunately, you can ask for hints. Yeah. And from that point on, I was absolutely fine, but th- there was a little hurdle to begin with. But that was lovely. That was a really lovely game. And uh, and I enjoyed, I enjoyed sort of smashing through that in, mm-hmm. in one sitting. <laughs> I played some Borderlands 3 as well Mm -hmm. that was good fun and after our discussion last week about a playstation handheld and we were talking about the playstation portal i was like did you buy a playstation i bought a playstation oh my god so imagine a 30 centimeter ruler sometimes i think like our ben is so mature and he's so such good impulse control Mm. like ben won't eat if we're getting a takeaway like he won't get a takeaway he's so like so good at that and then I'm like man I wish I had the impulse control of Ben and then sometimes you do things and I'm like that is such an Ashton I'm move a- and it's crazy <laughs> I'm allowed nice things sometimes yeah and I, I know nice I just, it just makes me laugh because I'm like 
you've you've been like, oh, I've got my iPad, don't need a PlayStation portal. Mm-hmm. And I thought about it and thought, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Actually, I kind I of need one. kind of want one of those. So this A4 paper is it thirty centimeters? Would yeah. you say? Yeah. Right, it's bigger than this. Is it? It's it's a it's about this. It's about this long. Oh, really? It's, I didn't think it's it was that big. Massive. It's That's so, really big. It's so huge. And it's really weird because it feels like a, a mod that someone has made themselves. Yeah. Because of the, it's just two dual sense controllers on either side yeah. of the screen. It it's looks really so bizarre. Stupid. It looks also there's really no, fragile. Like, I wouldn't yeah. want to take it out. There's no mouth. official carry case as far as I can tell. Oh, great. God. Um, so I've just bought one off eBay from, you know, like... <laughs> Digi Games Ultra, or yeah. whatever you know, these weird brands. Um, and I haven't played much of it so far because it only arrived earlier this week. But I played a little bit of WWE 2K24 on it. Obviously, it's still internet depending. Yeah. Um, but the the screen is like the majority of the unit, and the screen's really good, and it looks it looks fantastic. And I'm I've, I've been playing it in bed, and I've just been struck by just how massive this screen is so <laughs> close to my face. Like, this screen is huge. It's really, like, honestly, it's a really, really cool piece of kit. Is it bigger than the Steam? Well, it might be bigger than the it's Steam. It's probably type, wider, but not as deep. Right, well, yeah. Because uh, yeah. it's it's just, it's, you know. A it's, tablet. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's got, like, almost no internal power at all because yeah. it's just it's just a screen it's got a ui that you then when you start it up it just says do you want to connect to the last console and it has like a cool it plays some ambient music has a cool animation like uh what's his name uh the wizard from marvel stock to strange stock to strange, Doctor strange. Doctor strange. Yeah. strange yeah. yeah it's got like a little portal thing that, that spins and then it says "Ooh, we're ready do you want to <laughs> do you want to hop through the portal and you yeah. press x and it goes Whoosh. Cool. And then takes you to the home screen. Because it's called and, a portal. Because it's called the PlayStation Portal. And mm. Doctor Strange makes portals. Doctor Strange loves portals. Okay, sometimes you, I mess up with <laughs> Okay? Hey, we all do it. You need to pick up, us up on it when yeah. we do it. Inevitably, that well, she just took me to task, to be fair, for buying a spot. No, a I just said it's a, like, that's such an Ashton move. It's the kind of thing I'd be like, I've got a bit of money. I don't, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna buy a little portal. I I am. I'm very impressed with it. Obviously, I haven't used it much. And mm-hmm. when that nice portal animation goes away, invariably because you're just connecting to it and the connection isn't fully established, it's like really blurry and pixelated. You're like, wow, it looks great. <laughs> um, but I mean, I I can't at the moment without extensive usage. I can't tell you whether or not. It's, it's faster it. or more responsive than just using it on your phone right. or on your tablet right. or your TV or whatever. Do some tests. It certainly does still have like like when it was running, it looked really good. Like when it was sorted, two K twenty four looked fantastic on it, and it was there's there was a slight delay because there just is, and that can be difficult, especially in a game where you where you have like you it requires some quite quick um, reactions to counter things, for example. So I found myself just unable to counter for right. l- for large periods of time. Right. So you're going to want to play certain games on it. But, you know, we st- we've spoken before about how weird it is that Sony are making such specialized pieces of hardware. It's undeniably really cool, but I just don't know who else it's for yeah. apart from me. And I didn't even think it was for me anyway. But I bought it, so yeah. I'll let you know how I get on as I play more with it. But I have a PlayStation. I'm one of the six people who has a PlayStation portal. Cool. Nice. So join the club, everyone. <laughs> uh, should we move on to question two then? Comes from Ferris Wheeler. No one answered me, so I'll just do it. Yes, Ferris Ashton. Wheeler. Yes. Um, Ferris Wheeler says, you. "Does video gaming move too fast? Are we in danger of forgetting our own culture?" BAFTA took a look at to see what people believe were the 20 most iconic video game characters of all time. While many characters that you would expect to see were certainly represented, there were some notable and conspicuous absences. Many characters, including including two from Baldur's Gate 3, were quite recent entrants into our cultural collective. When I think of someone being iconic, I think of things that embody the genre and that have stood the test of time to be remembered forever. So where is Donkey Kong? Where is Mega Man? Where are Spyro and Banjo? Where is Gordon Freeman, Doom Guy, or really anyone from more Mortal Kombat. Is gaming really so transient and fast-paced that we can't remember characters from more than a year ago? Are our founding fathers of gaming doomed to be f- replaced by the next IP? Temporarily yours, Ferris Wheeler. Thanks, Ferris. Thank you, Ferris. Thank you, well, Ferris. firstly, uh, there, we've we've heard the publishers loud and clear, and there will actually be no new IP ever. 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 Mm. It's just sequels and remakes. I'm afraid. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's actually yeah. We've re- it's, it's funny Full because saturation. it's kind of true. It's yeah. totally true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you haven't heard of this, basically, BAFTA 
put a, a post out the other day being like 20 most iconic characters and uh, caused a bit of a stir, yeah. just a bit. Uh, Lara Croft was number one, then Mario, and there was like Shadowheart and a star in Baldur's Gate 3. And then also like Hitman, Agent... 47 I'll, and I'll a few of them um which and people were like angry about this because of course they were it felt like rage bait and then yeah. they um they revealed that they like polled their audience yeah. and this was the top 20 um and people were acting like Lara Croft isn't like a famous video game character yeah. <laughs> see this was my my biggest takeaway from it is that people were really mad that Lara Croft came number 1 and all right, maybe Mario could have come number one. It depends one. who they've asked, though. It depends who they've asked, and it depends what you define as iconic. Because like, she had like five movies. Mario is. I don't think I would mind going out on the limb and saying he's probably the most recognizable video game character of all time. You could show your mm -hmm. grandma, and she would say, "There he is. It's, it's Mark. Marcus. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Marcus Phoenix." But um, iconic to me, it also has. I feel like you almost have to have, if not an edge to you, that you have to have something. You have to be more yeah. than just, oh, it, you're very recognizable. You are Mario. You have to have something to you. Um, and I, I think Lara Croft is one of the, I'd say, certainly top three most iconic yeah, I would video game so characters too. of all time. Yeah. She's cool. And she's she wears good glasses. Yeah. She wears good glasses. And Two pistols. Very recognizable and has stood the test of time. Is still, you know. And Angelina Jolie played her in multiple movies. Exactly. She did. All of that. So that was my biggest thing is like being mad at people being mad that mm. Lara Croft won. Mm. Mm -hmm. Would you like to hear the, the top 20? Yes. Yeah. Would you like to go from 1 to 20 or 20 to 1? 20 to 1. Okay. Come on. Make it work for us. us. Well, it's the wrong way around. I'm going to have to scroll, basically. From worst right. to best. At 20 is Nathan Drake from Uncharted. Mm -hmm. At 19, and I swear to God, this is the first time I've ever heard her last name. Oh, my God. So it really threw me when I read it. I felt the exact same way about this one. From The Last of Us, Ellie Williams. Yeah. Williams. I was like, who the hell's Ellie Williams? Who's Ellie Williams? Like, What's going on there? And then I realized it was Ellie. From I've the never. Last yeah. I mean, uh, to it be makes fair. makes sense if she has. Said. I always get thrown when I hear Joel's last name as well. Yeah, but what is it? What's is Joel's it last name? Bet Baker? Pass. Yeah, Joel I Baker. have heard it, but I can't remember what it is. Yeah, yeah. but when I see it, I'm like, oh yeah, that's his Troy last Baker. name. Well, it could be. <laughs> yeah. Joel something else. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Then we've got it at 18, Kazuma Kiryu from Yakuza. Mm -hmm. Astarian, Baldur's Gate 3. Cloud Strife, Final Fantasy 7. Mm -hmm. Crash Bandicoot, Crash Bandicoot. Mm -hmm. Steve, Minecraft. No, I got it the wrong way around. Steve. Solid Snake, Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> then it's Steve from Minecraft. It's an iconic game, but Steve is an iconic character. Come I wouldn't on. say so Steve either. has also made appearances in four other games, including the Minecraft spin-off, Minecraft Dungeons. Rubbish So game that was. wind your neck in. Yeah. Uh, number 12, Pikachu from Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Number 11, Arthur Morgan, Red Dead Redemption 2. 10, Shadowheart, Baldur's Gate 3. No, they're great characters. I do feel like there's a there's a whiff of recency bias around I think two Baldur's Gate that's 3 That's kind of the point, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, number 9, Kratos, God of War. Number 8, Master Chef. Hello. <laughs> uh, number 7, Link from The Legend. I think they mean Zelda from The Legend. Yeah, they yeah, do. They mean the Legend Zelda. of Link. The boy. Zelda's the um, boy. Pac-Man from 6. Uh, from Pac-Man at <laughs> 6. Jesus. Number 5 is Sackboy from Little Big Planet, number which five. I find very surprising. That's crazy. Number 4 is Sonic the Hedgehog from Sonic. Yeah. Number 3 is Agent 47 from Hitman. That's weird, that Two one. 2 is Mario, and 1 is Lara Croft. Agent 47 beating... Master Chief, Crash Bandicoot, several of those like 10 to 20 entrants mm. uh, is, is just bizarre. But I yeah. think recency bias is a good point because I think yeah. a lot of those games have had recent iterations within the last five years, if not less than that. And I think that maybe... Yeah, Spyro is an iconic character within the gaming sphere, but also hasn't had a new game since the Reignited mm. trilogy. Mm. And... Same with Banjo. Same with Banjo. A lot of these characters are, they're not currently in the zeitgeist of, of what gaming is, which is why they're not necessarily at the forefront of your mind. I do think when people like say, like react the way that they've reacted to this is in like, well, what about, what about this guy from Mortal Kombat, for example? It's like, well, if you were to ask to name 20 characters from like video gaming, just randomly out of the blue, mm. you'd probably think of the most recent games that you've played characters that have stuck out to you recently more so than necessarily a character in a, a game like Mortal Kombat which has a big roster 
probably wouldn't necessarily be at the forefront of your mind unless you're a big Mortal Kombat fan. And mm. there's loads of them around, but unless you target specifically people who play things like Mortal Kombat, the more iconic characters will potentially be characters that have been around more recently. Yeah. When it's yeah. a poll like I this. I think the results here were definitely symptomatic of uh you know the the sampling you know who are, who are they asking mm -hmm. um and recency bias definitely i think even people like kratos like i'm not saying that pre the the more recent god of war games uh, he wasn't that, iconic that he wasn't iconic or that he wouldn't have made maybe the top 20 uh but he he may have been much further down than what was he number seven or something yeah he was in the um, top 10 somewhere yeah. and i i think he, that he's obviously benefited hugely from the fact that he's had a couple of really good games recently. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, it kind of comes back to the sampling to an extent. But if you um, ask younger gamers now about people like Gordon Freeman or Mega Man uh, or even Spyro and Banjo, there are going to be a lot of people who have, if maybe they've heard of them at best, but mm -hmm. they might not think, you know, they're that cool or like really know much about them. And a lot of them probably haven't heard of them at all. Mm -hmm. So, um, you Mega know. Man definitely wouldn't be one yeah. that I would list off. No. So, although I uh, personally feel that if you're doing a list of uh, the most iconic people, uh, gaming characters of all time, it should have older stuff and it shouldn't be affected by recency bias. Um, it it's kind of difficult to avoid. It just depends who you're asking, what they've played, what they know about. And, uh, you know, even if you're asking people who uh, are older and were around for some of these characters, as you say, Ashton, that bias is is just inherent and you're, you're perhaps more likely to think of characters you've seen more recently than someone like Mega Man, who I think is an iconic video game character, but wouldn't come to mind if you asked me to name 20. I don't mm. think. not Maybe not 20. Yeah, I don't know. But probably eventually he would come to mind, but not... Mm -hmm. It's a bit like when you watch Pointless. Here's a very British conversation yeah. we're about to have. When you watch a show Pointless and they're like, name a Marvel character and then someone like Black Widow, who I would objectively be like, is one of the most iconic, she's literally an Avenger, will be a pointless answer. You're like, who have they asked? Yeah. Who are you asking? Who are these 100 people that you're asking? Um, but it's very similar to that in the sense of like, everyone has a different selection of characters that you think. I don't think that this is a sign that, that the gaming characters are temporary. I don't think no. things like Spyro and Doom Guy and to a certain extent the Mortal Kombat guys are being like pushed out of gaming consciousness. I don't think this is a sign of that. I think it's just a sign of like, there's so many characters and everyone is going to have a different set of games that they have played that they deem as iconic and different characters that they have on their list that potentially don't agree with like what certain people have in their mind as well they're not iconic unless they were 20 years old and have been around for that long yeah and i you think, have to be old to be iconic no exactly i think it's i don't think it's a sign that games moving too fast i think it's a sign that there are so many games and so many gamers that have so many different opinions about what is an iconic character mm -hmm. it's just a bit of fun yeah. yeah, it's just a bit of fun. And it's a very subjective list as well. Um, I think it did its job in that it made a lot of people cross and a lot of people talked yep. about it. I don't know that they intended to make people cross, but they had to have known that you're expressing a blood. We do it multiple times a week. Yeah. Yeah. You're we do a rank expressing list. a bloody opinion. Mm -hmm. How yeah. dare you? That's not the same as mine. I wouldn't read into this at all. I think yeah. they, ju they just polled a group of people. And if you pull up the threads, as you guys said, you'll find all sorts of biases and yeah, cause it's just people's opinions and it's not going to be the same as yours. And so I don't, I wouldn't say that, that everything is so transient, transient and fast paced that we can't remember characters from more than a year ago. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry. It's going to be okay. I mean, to be fair, Lara Croft hasn't had a game for like a good three, She's a, she's a Fortnite superstar. Oh, she is on Fortnite. Yeah. That is true. Um, I was just thinking, I was just wondering if she was in Fortnite when we well, were talking about, at this point. that's true. Yeah, she had the collection be. recently oh, as well. So, uh, yeah. But yeah, I, it's just, it's just a silly list, isn't it? Yeah. It's just a silly and list. And yeah, it partly depends as well how they actually got people to answer. Did they just say name who you think is the most iconic or name name 20 or name five or, or whatever. Or they list 100. Or did they have a list of 100 and say, which do you, who do you recognize? Yeah. Or who do you think is the most iconic out of this lot? And, you know, that alone, just the, the methodology can, can like completely change the way that 
the, the results come out. Mm. So. Who do you not think is the most uniconic? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Steve? Excuse me? Well, if they did that, that would be a little strange, wouldn't it? It would be a little weird, and it'd probably be kind of on the headlines. It, it would. That would make it weird news. It's weird news time, time for some weird video game news. Remember, you can submit some weird video game news to us on the relevant social media platform underneath the post that goes out on a Tuesday. Tuesday. However, Except it did go out on Wednesday. It week. did go out on Wednesday this week due to an, an admin error. <laughs> However, if you would like to guarantee a shout out at this point in the podcast, you need to go to patreon.com forward slash team triple jump, support us at the appropriate tier and become a producer just like Chip Thompson's thumbs. G.Y. Goliath. Nexus Polaris. Nicole Hansen. Kyle Gary. Andy Scott. Blake Thomas. I'm way too high. Timothy Bentley. Sharman Nomo. Great Giggity. Melody L. Bonnet. Katie Garrett. Gabrielle Philippic. Potato Shack 99. Eric Thieu. And Big Money Bobby Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, podcast producers. Thank you, podcast producers. Thanks. You got a weird news then? I've got a weird news here that was sent by Lloyd, sorry, Le Lloyd Williams uh, at Lloyd W90. I feel like I bring Lloyd stuff along a lot in weird news, but mm. I guess he just picks finds the stories the that I like. I finds the weirdest news. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is, oh, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> so it's according to Kotaku.com. Yes. Uh, it's under the category odds and ends. Yeah. Odds and ends. Random. <laughs> um, and it says, why, yes, that is a Witcher reference in the language learning app Duolingo. And then the article is tagged Fortnite. <laughs> oh. It's got nothing to do with Fortnite. I can tell you that now. Fortnite does not feature in huh. this list. Hey. In this article. Just get that metadata. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we may earn a commission from links on this page. Okay. Good says, to know. Levi Winslow. Thank you, Levi. Oh my God, he wrote mine too. Oh, wow. He's so busy. Yeah. The Witcher is a massive IP. I'm skipping this paragraph. <laughs> You read that right. There's a Witcher reference in Duolingo, the same app you might use to pick up some French vocabulary ahead of a vacation or brush up on the Spanish you learned in high school. In the official Witcher subreddit, user Geralt and Yennefer noticed something peculiar about a question they got in the app's Finnish course. Uh, Duolingo asked the Redditor to translate the phrase, The bride is a woman and the groom is a hedgehog. Puzzled by the specificity of the request, Geralt and Yennefer plainly asked in r slash Witcher if it was a reference to Sapkowski's successful fantasy series. According to IGN, it is. The publication got confirmation from a Duolingo spokesperson that the line points... Was it the owl? Did the owl? Yeah, the owl himself. Uh, that the line points to a question of price. A short story Sapkowski wrote in the 1993 anthology collection, The Last Wish. How, Nerds. right, how Nerds. would someone see that and be like, this must be The Witcher? Yeah. Like, how did the, how? Well, it's quite specific. Yeah. I guess if you know that story. But still very, the yeah. fact that like they're a, a Witcher stan and they went onto the Witcher subreddit and was like, is this The Witcher? And it was, is an absolutely crazy thing to just it's know. Very, it's a, the nerdiest thing to have ever happened, I think, <laughs> um, in the best possible way. Yeah. Uh, it was adapted into the, the story, um, A Question of Price from A Last Wish, was adapted into the fourth episode of The Witcher's first season on Netflix of Banquets, Bastards and Burials. Bastards. Bastards. Which tells the story of how Ciri became Geralt's daughter, in quotes. Duolingo is somewhat notorious for odd and funny sentences in our courses, but there's real learning value behind them, the spokesperson said. And at times, we've deliberately inserted anime, gaming, or other pop culture references into our content. What fun. To help connect language learning <laughs> so fun. with people's passions and interests. What is um, Finnish for Oni-chan? <laughs> Or, or something <laughs> equally <laughs> disturbing. You said that so quietly. <laughs> it really freaked me out. I hesitated. I was like, I well, didn't like it. I hesitated whether to say it at all because I thought, yeah, no, I shouldn't. Committed and then to I it. thought, no, I am going to. And then I thought, should I say it in like an anime voice? <laughs> I went from the polar ends of the spectrum and then thought, no, I was sitting just in the middle. Say it just quietly. say it quietly. It was worse. Yeah, it yeah. was. I just, I felt just a shiver of uncomfortable. I can, I can understand why. To answer your question, surely it's still only, only Yeah, it's probably it's only It's a name and an, a Japanese honorific. So. Yeah. Okay, well, moving on. I have some news. It was sent by Kirkle. 
It's, Kirkle? No, it's Kirk L. Oh, okay. Kirk. 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 When I read his name, I thought it was Kirkle and it was funny. Uh, anyway, it comes from Kotaku in the Odds and Ends Department oh. by Levi Winslow. Um, Dragon's Dogma 2 players really want to kiss their pawns. Oh. Folks in the subreddit are wondering why the loyal serpent NPCs are blushing so much. Um, Dragon's Dogma 2 is Capcom's latest high fantasy action role play. You know that. There are a um, lot of sexy women in the, yeah. in the porn department. You well, here's can... the thing. It says a lot about how boring your game is if you have to allow people yeah. to... If your game is interesting, you don't have to kiss pawns. So. You, you can, can romance all sorts of NPCs, but you can't romance the pawns. Uh, a disappointing fact for the many players begging to date their loyal servants. Wow. Um, you can raise your affinity level with just about everyone you come in contact with, doing things that, for the characters that make you meet makes them like you more, which raises their bond with you for the game's romance system. Um uh, unfortunately, pawns, the game's mostly obedient retainers that you create or hire, aren't part of this love equation. No matter what you do, traveling with them far and wide or showering them with gifts, they will never be romanceable. Though such actions do raise their affinity level with you, some players still want to fling want to fling with their faithful retainers. They're your employees. Yeah. How dare you? <laughs> um, why can't we romance our pawns? Asked Redditor Floopy Doop ninety Good. in a post in the R Dragons Dogma uh, Reddit. We spend every second together. They greet us after a rest in our beds. We create them with an incredible, robust character creator. There can be beneficial combat or support buffs in having romanced your pawns. Bigger heels, stronger attacks when they're done together etc and then someone else asks if pawns are romanceable now because there's a video of their main pawn blushing when they speak my girl is showing symptoms of max affinity and there are barely any posts about it so far um and then a couple of like other th pictures of the pawns blushing were posted mods incoming uh, mm. yeah and you can't romance pawns in dragon's dogma 2 there isn't an explicit reason though the theory is you can't you can't date them because their only goal is to help you the arisen reclaim what is rightfully yours well that helps in then a way. there is currently a head canon on reddit as well where people have said players are always alone with their main pawn at their own houses sleep at the same time and most likely in the same bed plus main pawns sometimes blush before and after sleep um I think that hinting here is a crystal clear. Of course, you can still think the opposite in your head canon, but I don't think you can deny the hints. And yes, I would like a porn romance update. How did you know? So you can't kiss them, but people think that maybe you do kiss you them. You are kissing them. Secret kissing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Anyway. In the monkey dungeon. In the monkey dungeon. <laughs> don't no. kiss in the monkey. What if we kissed no in the monkey No kissing dungeon? in the what monkey dungeon. It's too sad. <laughs> I have a weird news. Yeah. This cut. <laughs> this comes from Cameron J. Keywood on Twitter. Thank you, Cameron. Uh, this is an article from the Gamer Ant. Yay! In particular, he's back. Dominic Bosch Jack. Cool. Sorry, Odds Dominic. Ends. <laughs> Odds and ends. Uh, this uh, article is entitled "Extremely Limited Fallout Burger Meal Coming This Week." Cool. Oh. Grubhub, which I think which is, is just, just eat. eat. But in America, oh, it? and when they did the, the did advert, somebody say grub grub hub? yeah, there was a thing a little while ago of like Katy walk. Perry going through like all of them, and Grubhub yeah. was one. Yeah, Snoop Dogg as well. Yeah, he did one. Grubhub has announced a Fallout themed snack pack called the Nuka Blast Burger Meal. That presumably that's what happens afterwards when you go to the toilet. <laughs> the, un this unique offering will be available to order later this week, but in such limited quantities that most Fallout fans will never get a chance to try it. Good. The product itself is meant to commemorate the forthcoming release of the Fallout TV series. Nearly two years after it originally started filming, Skip, ahead of that occasion, <laughs> Grubhub unveiled the Nuka Burger Blaster, but Blast, hang on, the Nuka Blast Burger Meal inspired by the Fallout universe. The snack pack includes the eponymous Nuka Blast Burger paired with a side of fries and the Nuka Cola Victory Special Release. But where's it from? Because Grubhub's just just eat. Where are they getting it from? I don't That's know. A, question, actually, yeah. a limited, hang on, a limited edition peach mango drink made by Jones Soda, which itself has just recently started shipping to people who pre-ordered back in March. As for the package at hand, the Nuka Blast Burger Meal will become available to order for residents of New York City and Los Angeles on April the 11th. Why? Why not? Why not Newcastle upon Tyne? Supplies <laughs> will be limited with each city only getting 150 menus. It says. I don't know. What? what? Uh, it seems you order it directly through Grubhub. Okay, so you just get mystery so burger from Grubhub. <laughs> I know Grubhub makes from? it. Is it from? One it of comes their, in a cool package. Is though? it from one of their ghost kitchens that are really? Oh prevalent? yeah, 
Look at that. Cool little, like that a sort of cool. lunchbox style thing. Do you that will sell for loads of money on eBay. Almost like certainly week. will. Do you remember when the PS5 came out and Greg's did a PlayStation uh, yeah. Greg's box? Oh, yeah. And you got like Shapes two sausage rolls, a, 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 maybe a, a drink a and a donut. And it came in like a little cardboard sleeve that had the PlayStation symbols and Greg's. I held on to that. Mm. I, put, I just put it in my PS5 box because I thought, that's a nice little memento. Mm. But clearly it was so popular that I ordered it a couple of times that weekend when it came out because I thought, I'll get another one. And they just delivered the constituent parts without the box. Oh. I was like, that's a r I've been had there. She Google yeah. how much she could sell it for. Yeah. Bit of cardboard. Mm -hmm. People, people love, would buy people it. People love cardboard. Are you joking? I feel like Greg's is probably, a Greg's PlayStation 5 item is probably not as sought after. Wow. It would be sought after. As a Nuka Blast it? Burger Meal box. Yeah. Mm. Pr pr promoting the Amazon Prime original. Fallout, I which apparently today. is all right. Yeah. Yeah. Haven't seen it yet. Didn't no, it, come out yesterday? it came out a day early, didn't it? Uh, did, it? did it? Yeah. It they changed it like a week ahead. I think they said, oh, yeah, it's coming slightly earlier than expected. Oh, oh cool. It came out yesterday. Oh, well, I'll try I and think. try and watch it before or watch some of it before the next podcast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have yeah. a chat if it's any good. But it's yeah. reviewing it's meant well. to be good. So that's, that's, I'm going to give it a go. It's exciting. I love Fallout. Shall we move on? I think we should. To the. What is it? The big discussion. It's big discussion time, time for the big video game discussion that this week's comes courtesy of Cameron Keywood. He's back. Hi, Bap. More Hi. details. More detail. Peter, do you want to say? Hi. More details of Star Wars Outlaws were revealed this week? Question, Question mark? mark? I'm looking forward to the game and its <laughs> premise, exploring the seedier side of the galaxy, but the price, especially for the gold and ultimate editions, is taking the Michael for a few skins, early access, and two unknown expansions. Do you think sales will be hurt by this? And what are your thoughts about the game in general? Kind regards, Cameron J. Keywood. I've got right up here from Push Square yep. and Liam Croft. Ubisoft revealed yesterday, earlier this week, that Star Wars Outlaws will launch for, for PlayStation 5 and other platforms uh, on the 30th of August, 2024. But what's got its potential community talking just as much is the eye-opening price of its Ultimate Edition. The publisher has slapped a £120 slash $130 price point on the most expensive version of the game, which gets you access to the game, its season pass, and a bunch of digital bonuses. This is, notable, this is a notable increase compared to past Ubisoft titles, so what do you get for almost the cost of two full price PS5 games. The base Nothing. game is bundled with its season pass, which will add two story focused expansions after launch, two cosmetic packs for protagonist Kay, her spaceship and other vehicles, a digital art book, and the chance to play the game three days early from the 27th of August, 2024. With the base game set at $70 and the gold edition costing $110, it means Ubisoft reckons the early access and season pass are worth $40. Maths. <laughs> Those extra cosmetic packs and the digital art book then add an extra $20 to the overall price. Compared to other Ultimate Editions that Ubisoft has offered in the past few years, it's a notable price increase. Here are some recent examples. The Crew Motor Fest was £99. Avatar Front, uh, Frontiers of Pandora was £114, and Skull and Bones was £94. All of those are 99 I should say, 94 99 So mm. technically a pound higher than I said. Yeah. The only other time Ubisoft That's how they get you. Yeah, yes. That 99p. The only other time Ubisoft has charged such a high price is for last year's Avatar game, which even then was priced ever so slightly cheaper in the UK. Residents of the United Kingdom have never paid more for a complete edition of an Ubisoft game than <laughs> Star Wars Outlaws. Plus, you'll need to maintain a constant internet connection to get the game installed on your PS5. Yeah. Some of the uproar seems to stem from confusion surrounding what, what? a season pass actually is, with some... Yeah, why right. did it talk about internet connection? I'm not really sure why, but I think it just implied that like, if you're getting it digitally, you you can't just have it. You've got to download I it. I think they're also just right. citing it as another thing that some people another are cross about. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Some of the uproar seems to stem from confusion surrounding what a season pass actually is, with some assuming it's more of a battle pass from a live service no, game. that's not what it is. It's not. No. While, uh, while games out of Ubisoft have been known to use microtransactions, the content in Star Wars Outlaws Ultimate Edition is all guaranteed content set to arrive either at launch or in the months after. The publisher hasn't confirmed whether it'll have a premium currency or microtransactions at the time of writing. There's also the option to play the game through the company's subscription service, Ubisoft Plus, for a much cheaper price if you sign up for a month. So what I really thought was quite funny, um, under like 
all the trailers that came out this oh, week. Did, did you look at the was comments? Was just comments being like, "Do not pre-order." Yeah. You know, it's all Ubisoft. of the top Don't comments bother were, pre-ordering. And a lot like, of them pointed to that that really irritating misquote about Ubisoft told me I need to get comfortable with not owning my games. Yeah, so I'm so. not. They need to get comfortable with me yeah. not buying their games. Yeah. That was a misquote. He was talking about how to get people comfortable with the idea of streaming games. And yeah. yes, logically, you need yeah. to be less comfortable with owning them if you're going to stream them. He wasn't making a comment yeah, yeah. about how you have no rights to the games you buy. But these. also, um, yeah, people were just being like, don't pre-order the game. Don't bother. Don't pre-order it. But... Mm -hmm. There was a lot of negative, like wall to wall negativity in the comments. I like only... They had thousands of likes on all the, all oh, the really? comments. I'm they were like, like, don't pre order. Part of me is like, yeah, I mean, I, I get it. Mm -hmm. And I also think that we live in an age where I don't trust releases of games anymore mm -hmm. because I've been spurned by so many games. Yeah. But I also, uh, I know that like obviously pre-orders are a massive thing for games like this and will help push it past like the finish line. However, I don't feel like Ubisoft necessarily need the money. And um, I agree. I don't think you should pre-order this game because I don't trust Ubisoft. They're also yeah. just doomed because yeah. all, all they need, to, even if it's fundamentally different in every conceivable way from a from an Ubi World game, yeah. yeah. All they need is one set of collectibles, and everyone will go, yeah. "Oh, bloody Ubisoft open worlds!" Yeah. You know, yeah, they will. I'll blah, give blah, them a blah. collectible if they make me climb up one tower. If to I reveal climb the map. one tower, yeah, yeah I haven't climbed true. a tower in an Ubisoft game in a while, though. To be fair, you uh, did, what, did you play Far Cry recently? I played six. You didn't? Did you climb towers in six? Yeah. Did you? We've not yet seen footage of her Something climbing like that. any oh, towers, but there'll be space towers. Space towers. We've not seen happen. that much gameplay. No, we really. haven't. To be fair. More positively, Peter, what do you think about the game as a Star Wars? Well, I was going to say that I watched the trailer just on my... I was on my PS5 already just scrolling through YouTube and it, then I heard that it had dropped, so I watched it full screen. Absolutely crazy, by the way, watching YouTube on your PlayStation 5. Oh, yeah, I know. It's, I do that sometimes. Yeah, I, I already had the console up and then I, when I was done gaming, I was like, oh, I'll watch some YouTube. Um, but I uh, had it full screen and you don't get the comments on when you're, when you're watching YouTube on PlayStation or if you do, it's harder to find them. So I didn't see any of that. So, um, yeah, no negativity in my trailer viewing experience. I think looks really good. I'm really excited. I think it's like on a personal level in terms of things that I've always wanted to do uh, in Star Wars video games, I've always wanted a sort of a, an Uncharted style Star Wars game. You sort of, you Star Wars 1313 kind of thing, third person kind of charismatic action adventure, fun thing with an interesting story. Semi-linear would be preferable, but clearly it's open world. I know that, but you know, hopefully it's, it's a, a story that, you know, has just sequences of interesting main quests and not mm -hmm. just a, a bunch of nothing. Um, I've also really wanted to uh, see Jabba the Hutt at like the height of his power, which mm -hmm. he never really has been depicted as in visual media. There's loads of books and comics and stuff, but we've only seen him either briefly start a pod race and fall asleep in the first film. <laughs> The uh, or episode one, and then you know when he was actually in Return of the Jedi in his original form, uh, and since then nothing really. When uh, we learned that uh, Boba Fett was going to go to his palace in the Boba Fett series, I know he was dead at that time, but I thought, hey, maybe we'll see some flashbacks or something. No, I really like Jabba the Hutt, and I'm looking forward to him being my boss. Um, he didn't appear in Solo either, so mm. I think it sounds like a really good game. You go in from. Uh, syndicate to syndicate doing various criminal quests for them. There's clearly a lot of planets. You've got your spaceship. It doesn't look like it's going to be customizable. I think it's going to be like, well, it, I don't think it's going to change an awful lot in terms of its its makeup and its model. You'll probably be able to just do little tweaks to it. Um, but to me, it just looks like, so far, uh, an interesting character, some fun gameplay, what little we've seen, um, and uh, an, an interesting world and story. I mean, it all remains to be seen. Uh, the proof of the pudding will be in the playing, but I'm excited. Hmm. I am um, also I'm excited, mm -hmm. and I think that the story is really interesting. However, I thought the character models looked a bit uncanny valley, and they were kind of freaking me out a little bit. Right. I don't know the the art style or the graphics they've gone with. Are, I kind of like couldn't wrap my head around them a little bit. Like they weren't the hyper realistic side of things we've seen from games recently it wasn't particularly stylized but i i thought they looked a bit strange and i can't really like i can't tell you exactly why i was just looking at their faces and being like they kind of 
look a bit weird, like the animations and stuff. But that might just be that we're I've been spoiled by lots of other games. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm interested in this game. I'm now into Star Wars now. <laughs> uh, yeah. And yeah, I, but I, I have to be honest, the the golden platinum edition or whatever they're called is yeah. is a crazy thing. We'll get into that in a minute. But yeah, I think it looks interesting. Will you play it, do you think? Um I I would like to th- like I like Star Wars and I would I would like to play it, but I I just I'm not excited for it i'm not not excited for it i'm kind of just ambivalent and maybe yeah. the closer we get i'll get more excited or when it comes out and, and i see, some see reviews. more gameplay i think yeah. yeah like it's the the premise alone is not enough to make me go yes all right come on i'm playing this day one mm-hmm. and that's not criticism of the game i think i'm just kind of we've had a lot of star wars in the past yeah. few years and we've had a lot of just scoundrel characters you know yeah. it's a lot hard of when you... seedy underbellies yeah. and things um so i don't think it's anything that the game is doing wrong as much as it is, I, I think we're still just slightly too far away for me to get excited about mm-hmm. it. Um, but I, I would, uh, you know, I want it to be really good, and I think that setting, historically, correct me if I'm wrong, Star Wars nerds, mm. uh, historically me. that setting. Well, you've seen more Star Wars than me now, That's I think. Right. Um, historically, that setting is sort of like the height of the Empire. Yeah. Tends to lend itself to some of the best stuff mm, that that has agree. come out of Star mm-hmm. Wars. So. It's it's a fertile play space. Lots of room for towers and little yeah. I like the little speedy vehicles. There's mm-hmm. this, the yeah. bike speeder thing that went across the water. That looked cool. You got a cat thing. Yeah, great. Yeah. Love that. Gotta be able to pet that. Gotta be a trophy for petting that. A couple of um I feel I feel like ambivalent in the sense of like I want to play a Star Wars game and I like the look of it. However, I know it's an Ubisoft game. And I do yeah. like and I have famously enjoyed Ubisoft games. Mm-hmm. However, I would resent them for making it Far Cry but Star Wars. Yeah, right. It was uh, just a reskin of Pandora. Just, yeah, just, well, this is yeah. it part licenses. of the reason I didn't bother playing Avatar was because I just looked, it didn't look like that interesting mm. to be a Navi in a world that still just kind of looks like Far Cry. That's that's one of the reasons why at the moment I'm looking forward to it is that it doesn't look like an Ubisoft game, mm. which is, you know, I'm but sure we've Ubisoft only wouldn't seen be happy to hear me say that. But The internal of a, a cantina in gameplay, like yeah. of her fighting her way through and it didn't look like a Far Cry game, to be fair. I mean, mm-hmm. it's not in first person to start with. I mean, yeah, that can make a lot of difference, actually. Yeah. Even just that kind of thing. Change the camera perspective and suddenly the game feels different. And whether yeah. that's a good or bad thing, I don't know. It might turn out that, yeah, when we get to the actual gameplay, it really is just a set of huge planets you can visit with loads of map markers. And occasionally there'll be an interesting story mission with a cutscene. And But really, it's an Ubisoft game. But mm-hmm. so far from what little we've seen, it feels a bit different to me. Mm-hmm. Um uh, but uh, I was going to say as well, there's, there are a few treats in there for for Star Wars fans. Um, uh, what's her flipping name? Who played Daenerys Targaryen? Um, um, Amelia Clark. Yes. Yeah. Her character from Solo is apparently yeah. going to be in there. Oh, she really? was in the trailer, wasn't she? Well, uh, people, I saw people or maybe saying, was in the trailer. oh, she's in the trailer. There's a bit where it like pans across and the guy says, oh, yeah, you're here from Crimson Dawn, which is the name of her syndicate. And there is a girl at the table. And I thought... Is that her? And people were like posting the screenshot around. I was going, I don't think that's her. But since then, the it's been confirmed, I think, that her character is in it. I don't think that was her in that no. shot. But mm. I think they have said, yeah, mm. but she will be. Does that mean we're going to see Darth Maul? Are we going to see that paid, paid up, you know, that, that yeah. tease paid off finally? Maybe. from Because he was in charge of that. He was in charge of that syndicate. Mm. So mm. maybe. How um, long before we see a Jedi? Because that's going to happen, isn't oh, it? Oh, Maul's dead. By then. Yeah, oh, I was is he gonna dead? Say, I think he might he be died dead. Before a new hope. Oh, that's a yeah. shame. Yeah. So uh, we're going to see a Jedi probably at some point because we've got to. Like Darth Vader probably. will show up because he's got because he's contractually obligated to be in every Star Wars yeah. game. Boba Fett, almost certainly, right? This is the kind of thing I don't want, though. Well, I know people yeah. don't want that, but can they? Boba can Fett they... would make more sense than them there being yeah. a Jedi in it because can... they're in the outer rim. Well, yeah, but if you're going to see the huts and stuff. Oh, and we saw uh, Han Solo in Carbonite in the trailer. Oh, yes, really? Yeah. We did. Oh, so, cool. yeah. and apparently when Boba Fett dropped Han Solo off at at Jabba's, mm. he hung around at Jabba's palace for a long time. So I think we may well run into Boba Fett, to yeah. be fair. But are they, the question is, are they, because it's not lazy to rely on old characters coming back, but it is a bit of a tired trope of Star Wars. It movie. is, and I think it's all right to do your, oh, what's that thing, glup? Glup shito. Can I say that? <laughs> Who? <laughs> this is the joke. What? Is that 
Someone, it's like a copy pasta. Someone put on Twitter once ages ago, mm. Star Wars fans be like, oh my God, have you seen the latest trailer? They're bringing back Glup Shitto. <laughs> and the joke being, it's always some like weird, what the hell is this? There's now a Twitter account. The way you've said flip three times in this podcast yeah, yeah. is crazy. I managed to get away with it on every have occasion. Have you? <laughs> I don't know. Um, but there's a, even now a Twitter account called Glup Flippo of the day or something. Right. And it's just a photo of just like weird a, little guys. That, yeah. And, okay. yeah. And that's what is okay. Like, you know, Kira from Solo, uh, mm. Amelia Clark, she's enough of a background character. She's been in one film and some comics. Yeah. Like, I don't mind if she's in it. I don't want to see Darth Vader. I don't want to see uh, whoever you just said. Well, a Jedi even. Mm. Like, it relies too much on Jedi, I think, Star Wars. And... What if you're at the cantina when Ben and Luke come oh my in? God. <gasps> Yeah. No, because Luke already, <laughs> That's already is, happened. He's but, already frosty. Yeah. yeah. But the rebellion is happening and the yeah. I mean Luke literally could turn up in an X Wing, which yeah. he should not do. He will. Um, and he'll yeah. go, Hi, character. Luke it's Skywalker. me, Luke Skywalker. And he'll salute with both hands as yeah. he goes past. It would make the most sense that Han Solo is in it, considering she's kind of a scoundrel type character. But mm. yeah, I should answer the question. I suppose so. About the, well, uh... My main concern, very quickly, hmm. is that she's not going to be scoundrel enough because she just she's working for baddies, but she seems quite nice in the trailer. Like she That's doesn't what tends to happen with all of these scoundrels. Yeah, they've got to have so. a redeeming quality. They can't well, just be I a know, criminal. But like I just, uh, there's nothing that's shown me so far that she she's she, shooting first. And yeah, stuff like she that. just she doesn't seem like a villain. And I know she doesn't have to be a villain, but like Han mm. Solo was was on several occasions shown to be a dick. Yeah, and I don't. I'm not getting that. I'm getting that she's just a, a capable woman in a in a challenging situation, Ugh, which is fine. Woman. That's not a problem. <laughs> no, yeah, no, but I want that. like I want her to be a I want her to be a piece of work. Yeah. You know? yeah. I want her to and really maybe have like a redemption. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean that would be predictable, but you know, it's kind of you can't not do it. You know, it's like yeah. um various games and films, or not films, but things they've done over the years where you're like following someone who's in the Empire. Mm -hmm. Um like the the Battlefront two uh campaign. Yeah started with an imperial and you just know from the moment you hit start game well she's going to defect to the rebellion by the end isn't she yeah. because this isn't going to be about me showed it in the trailer doing as well. The, well yeah it did so <laughs> it's part of the course mm. but yes ashton we should answer the question mm. um i don't think uh there's a part of this question i think the answer is no to wait where is it do you think sales will be hurt by this i don't know mm. um I going in coming into this podcast, I was going to say no, but you have now said that there are a lot of negative comments on the on the trailer. To me, it's like I don't see how sales should be affected by specifically these these tiered releases, uh, tiered versions. Because if you don't want to pay for something that's one hundred and twenty quid or whatever it is, you just buy the base game. So yeah. in that sense, I don't see how or why. Uh, sales should be affected yeah. unless people are choosing to vote with their wallets and say this is bull flip this is mm. glup flippo <laughs> and i'm not having it and i'm not going to buy your game full stop because yep. i don't like the way you're you're doing these tiered things mm. i think that like we've we've talked about collector's editions before relatively recently i think and about how if you're gonna buy a collector's edition or something like this then you will buy it but i think the issue i have with this is the fact that there is nothing apart from digital stuff that you are given for paying 120 quid and again, it, I know that this is a misquote, but from the perspective of someone who has digital content and is aware of the the fragility of digital content, I would be reluctant to spend £120 on something that could potentially be taken away from me mm -hmm. at any given moment. I know that it's like, well, I spent 60 quid on digital versions of games, and I understand that, but I'm getting my money's worth i think for like 60 quid i'll get 60 hours of gameplay i'm not saying that's mandatory but you know what i mean then i feel like i'm getting something out of it if i'm just getting like a digital art book for 20 quid and some cosmetic items for a character in a game i i just think that there's just this acute unawareness from publishers of like that people will spend money on virtual tat i know people will yeah but i think that people have to really care about something and you've got a game where it's not a notable character it could be in any universe you've just stuck star wars on it to like 
get people to buy yeah. it, then I think that potentially they're asking, well, not potentially, they're asking way too much money for what it is. The and ultimate edition is, is like, I was surprised by what was in there. I was like, really? That's it? Yeah. Compared to the middle one, which is you get the three days early access and you get the, the pass for all the DLC. Yeah. On top of that, all you get for paying extra is the art book and some cosmetics, I think. I think that's it. Yeah. It's like, God, I'm not, I'm certainly not paying for that. I'd possibly, if I, closer to the release, if I'm really excited and I want to play three days early, maybe I'll be a bit cheeky and I'll, I'll splash out and pay to play three days early and then know that I've got the DLCs sorted as well. Mm -hmm. But the top tier one is rubbish. I yeah. think it's not worth yeah. the money. Ubisoft are a bit of a punching bag at the moment, yeah. rightly or wrongly. I think that misquote did them did them a huge disservice, mm -hmm. and a lot of people are holding on to that. Um, and also, they've just re they've been on something of a losing streak for years in terms of their success and quality of certain games. And they kind of need a win. Stagnation of of various IPs and things like that. So it, they're an easy company to take a swing at here. And they are not the only people who are charging exorbitant fees for digital collector's editions. I yeah, think digital true. collector's editions are an absolute joke. Mm -hmm. The only thing that is worth getting in a digital collector's edition is a season pass. Yeah. If you know what's coming in the season pass, mm -hmm. yeah. and if when bundled with the base game, it's cheaper to get it yeah. that way. Mm -hmm. And it's something you're really looking mm -hmm. forward to and want to play. Otherwise, who the flipping heck? It has ever looked at a digital art book. I barely even look at physical well, art exactly. books. Exactly. They just go straight on the shelf. Yeah. You know, a digital art book is like, you know, take nothing away from the quality of the wonderful art mm. from the amazing yeah, artist that's inside. But digital, mm. like you would, you would pay money. You would want to pay money for that. I don't really, I don't understand at all. I mean, the game, you can still buy the game without this stuff, as you mm. said. Bless you. Bless you. You don't Thank need you. to buy this crazy edition. Yes, it's a you know exorbitantly expensive, and it, I think it's a complete waste of money. But it's not like the, it's not the only option. Yeah, I feel like people are making a fuss out of this because it's Ubisoft, um, and also because apparently people are confusing a battle pass for a season pass, yeah. Yeah. which is which is a completely different thing. I do think companies should be clear about what. Bless you. <laughs> I do think companies should be clear about what comes in an, in an expansion, a, a season pass, like mm -hmm. what you can expect and the sort of value that you, the value proposition in terms of hours, you know, this is going to be, you're going to get two, three to four hour story expansions yeah. in the next however many months. There's still a few months left before release and also it being Ubisoft, it would not surprise me if we don't get this on, what was it, August the 10th or something? 30th. The, oh, 30th. All oh, right, that was earlier than Got that. even longer to wait. Yeah. Um, well, there you go. It's already been moved by Ashton. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it gets delayed a bit. I know we're like quite close to release now, relatively speaking, and so you'd hope that they have a That's good idea. That's not stop now, people it's before. Not stop, no, it's not. Um, and so, uh, yeah, there's time yet for them to perhaps clarify and say, okay, here's what those DLCs are going to be. So at least you're then going in a bit less blind. But... Yeah, it, uh, certainly the <laughs> ultimate edition is not worth the price. No. And barely the whatever it's called, the gold edition or something. Yeah. Um, you know. And it's got Star Wars on the box. Yeah. There's a lot of people who aren't, you know, the the 6,000 people up, up voting a comment that says, flip Ubisoft, mm. uh, that will see Star Wars and think, oh, Ubisoft. They make that, bless you, they make that Assassin's Creed that I like, just that I haven't played for a while. There's more coming. Yeah. Um, I'll buy that. I'll give that a go. Mm -hmm. I am, you know, I, if I were to com take a complete stab in the dark, 84 on Metacritic. Yeah, yeah. 83 on Metacritic. You know, you that's, a good, that's a good game and people will want that, even if you have to spend £130 to get a digital app. I'm actually fine with people making a stink about this because I think there should, if this happens a lot, this should be made a stink about mm -hmm. because yeah. I think this is a scam. I think yeah. people did should you just see what not. I did there? Yeah. It's a scam. That's what you'd be soft. <laughs> I think the real. Did you just drop something? No, my my zip. It's fine. You okay? You carry on. You're dying. Hey, hey, hey. You're so hey, close to the end. Stop Ashton. talking to All right, me. Sorry. And get your point. So, out. Peter. <laughs> yeah. The point I was going to make is that um, I've I've forgotten it now because I was got distracted. Cool. Wait, yeah. What were you saying? Uh, we we're talking about. I was talking Star about making a stink about the digital company. Yes. It's a scam. Yeah. It is a scam. I just think that the best way is, yeah, you can make as much of a stink as you want. I don't think not buying the base game is going to tell Ubisoft that 
your expensive edition is too expensive. Yeah, you can, they can't yeah. separate. Out I that I think you just effect. you just don't buy the expense. If no one spends one hundred and thirty pounds yeah. to get it three days early and a digital art book, then maybe they'll work that out. I think they'll sell plenty of regular copies, but I think it, you know you'd be hard pressed to find someone who who says, yeah, that sounds great. Mm-hmm. I want that. It's it's so much easier for them to make a super expensive digital collector's edition than it is for them to physically manufacture a load of stuff. Yeah. You know, if they put together this like box of tat that yes. and and the story was they charge 120 quid for this. Rubbish. Then they've sp- spent money on creating it and then they're, they're going to potentially lose money if they don't all get sold whereas when it's just a digital art book with art that already exists and a couple of cosmetics that probably didn't take that long again to take nothing away from the artists and the developers to to put together uh it didn't cost them that much extra to throw all this stuff together into a thing and so they can kind of even if they sold one of mm. these on their next game, they could still do it because it doesn't yeah. cost them that much yeah. to do. And they go, well, no. if someone buys it, great. If they don't, it's not really cost what us that much. What can we shove in the Ultimate Edition this yeah. time, you know? So that's the problem with digital is it's so easy for them to put these together. It doesn't it cost them up front as much. Mm. Well, let us know what you thought of all the things we've discussed today. We will see you next week. Uh, Peter has got some links he's going to tell you about. Hello, we are at youtube.com and twitch.tv forward slash team triple jump. All of our videos are going out on YouTube and we stream over on Twitch. And if you've got Amazon Prime, you are paying for a whole bunch of things. And one of those things you are paying for is a Twitch sub that you can redeem against us and you get all the benefits of being subscribed, but at no extra cost on top of what you're already paying for Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, on all of which we are at Team Triple Jump. And if you'd like to support us, it's patreon.com forward slash Team Triple Jump. Triplej.mup. That's our website, tripleju.mp. There's links to everything that we do there, so you can go and check that out. And why not leave a five-star review on your platform of choice? It helps something to do with Al Gore's rhythms, and we'd really appreciate it. Uh, just enough time to talk about this week's sponsor again, Ashna Matthews. It's Mama Wars Cold Slaws. Excellent. Cold slaws. Cold slaws. <laughs> How do you say she, that word? She's got a cold, cold slaw, cold I think. Slaw. Cold 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 slaw. Cold slaw. And then cold saw is the yeah. thing on your mouth. It's different. Mama wars cold saws. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, we're going to go and put Ashton down now. <laughs> um, just take her out. And down for a nap. Well, no, yeah. just a permanent you. Oh, cool. We're going to <laughs> We're just going to go and, and euthanize cool, cool, you cool, now. Cool. Uh, thank you very much for watching and listening. We'll see you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.